SCP-507. I've heard a great deal about you. It's nice to officially meet you. I see. Well, that doesn't come as much of a shock. I've read here in your case file that you've been granted access to free roam. So, I wouldn't be surprised if your comrades and other SCPs have told you about me already. With that being said, allow me to introduce myself officially to you. My name is Dr. Smith, and I've been assigned to be your new case supervisor, as well as your other SCP comrade. Okay? So, I'm aware that you all were quite bonded with your old case supervisor, but due to their sudden retirement, I will be now taking over. I hope that you and I will be able to get along just as well. Alright. Today's meeting is just sort of an introductory meeting. I just wanted to meet you, kind of go over what I have in your case file, and speak to you about any sudden or your last disappearance. All right? I do have a few exams I would like to run on you as well followed by a second meeting, probably tomorrow, where I would like to do a psychological exam. Alright? But that'll be for another day. So, SCP-507. It seems your description is accurate. I see here, Caucasian male, blonde hair and green eyes. Average build. All right. And it does say you have a vague accent. Do you mind if I ask where you're from? Hmm. I see. Okay. Just going to add that to your chart here. Okay. Now, 507, I see here under your name that it is listed as unknown. It appears your name was never retrieved with your files. However, it does say that you like when people give you nicknames and you have been known to go by Tommy, Steve, Bruto, Guy, Houdini, that's a clever one, and Grab and Knock the Destroyer? I see. Very well. Is there a nickname you prefer? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a name. Are you sure you'd like me to call you Grab Knock the Destroyer? Thank you. Tommy it is. All right. Are you aware of your name or is this something that you have forgotten? I see. Okay. Very well. Now, Tommy says here you were recovered from an asylum. The name has been redacted. Hmm. I'm sure if I looked a little further, I could come up with this information, but do you mind telling me the name of the asylum where you were discovered? Very good. Now it says you were recovered due to surveillance footage showing you had repeated successful escape attempts that brought to life your abilities. Is 
Jesus Christ. Okay. It does say that records of the incident were confiscated and that 507 was taken into custody that day. So you've been here at our foundation ever since. And how are you finding our facilities? Understandable, but other than being held here, is everything going okay for you? Have you noticed your abilities to be in check? I see. Okay. Well. I am slightly familiar with your abilities. As it says here in your chart, it was originally thought that 507 had teleportation abilities due to its sudden disappearances and then later reappearances in different locations. Correct? Yes, yes. However, after further study and subsequent interviews with 507, we have concluded that this ability could be used in such a manner, but that it was merely a side effect of your main afflictions. Right. Will you tell me a little bit about those main afflictions? Mm-hmm. Yes. It does say that here as well. It says that 507 holds that during its periods of disappearance and is actually displaced into a random alternate reality, the landscape generally staying the same with the inhabitants, such as myself, and the climate of the parallel world often do not. Is this correct? Fascinating. I'd love to set up time with you to hear more about these worlds. I apologize. I understand that that could be a little frightening, but it is something I would like to investigate further and see if there's a way I could help you control these disappearing and reappearing instances. Okay? I just want what's best for you and if we're able to control this ability of yours, we might be able to use it for the greater good. Okay. Yes, I understand you have no control over the ability in this moment, but I'd like to see if it's something that you can harness and practice it. It does say here that you cannot control the time or the duration of your disappearance. Is that correct? So you're not able to pinpoint a place in history or the future, the past, and you can't control how long you're disappeared for. Correct? Hmm. I see. Have you ever had any successful disappearances or displacements yet that you've tried to do? Okay. Normally I would want to confirm this on my own time, but it already says that multiple staff have confirmed this by the subject being displaced at inconvenient times such as mid-sentence, while sleeping, or, <clears throat> or while using on-site public facilities. How unfortunate. Okay. So. It says here that you are granted access to move around the facilities with free will, with certain limitations. A staff member must accompany you at all times to make sure that you're not displaced, and if you are, to keep an eye on you for when you reappear. Just in case we have to 
bring you back to our facilities, correct? Okay. Now, when you are displaced, you are in a alternate reality, but in the same location where you were displaced from. So, if you choose to move around that world, when you reappear, are you reappearing in the same location in our world? I see, so you are. So it seems there is some correlation between our reality and the one you're displaced in. Very interesting. Okay. Alright. Now. Your file says here that mentally, SCP-507, shows no large deviations from the psychological profile of a normal person. However, I would like to be the judge of that myself. I'm not saying that you're not a normal psychological being, but you were found in the asylum, and you clearly hold an ability that is not seen in an average human. So, I would like to set up a time with you to have a full psychological session, but for today, I would like to run a few quick exams and do a little word association, okay? Very good. If you are good and you cooperate, I saw here on your file that you have been asking to play 50 rounds, 50 rounds of tic-tac-toe with SCP-076-2. Correct. Very well. It seems that you have requested this quite frequently, so if the rest of our session goes over smoothly. I will be happy to set up your play date with SCP-076-2. Very good. It hasn't been done yet, but I'm glad to see you're willing to cooperate. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'd like to start by just taking a quick look at your face and your physical manifestation and see if I notice any abnormalities. So I'm going to start by sanitizing my hands here. Allergies to latex or vinyl, do you? Very good. I just want to put these on just to be safe. Since you've been in alternate dimensions, I'm not sure if there's any particles or anything that I should be weary of. So better safe than sorry. Now, please hold still as I just take a quick look at your face. Just check out your ears here. 
gonna push down on your shoulders and I want you to shrug up and keep me from pushing down. Okay. Good. Alright. I would say your strength did seem about average, so nothing out of the norm for your physical abilities as of now. I still would like to test that further. Next. I would like to take a look into your eyes here. So, I have my pen light. Alright. Go from eye to eye here. Okay. Good. Great. Very good. Now tell me, Tommy, when you have these displacements, do you notice any changes physically before or after? It's just I'm trying to find a correlation that can help us better control these abilities for you. So if you notice any feelings before the displacement or afterwards, I'm just curious about what you're going through. Okay, I see. Alright, so no sudden onset of nausea or afterwards or blurry vision, sensitivity to light. Fascinating. You're going to be a very interesting case study, Tommy. Alright, if it's alright with you, I would like you to keep your head, neck, and shoulders still. And I would like you to simply follow the light with your eyes, okay? Very good. Here we go. Doing great. Are you feeling any uncomfortableness at all or sensitivity? Okay. If at any point you feel uncomfortable or you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'm here to help. Very good. Right. Next, I'm going to have you to continue keeping your head, neck, and shoulders still. And I'm going to hold up my hands over to the sides of your eyes here and your face and I just want you out of your peripherals looking at my notes here to tell me how many fingers I'm holding up and on which hand. Simple. Here we go. Okay. Five. Good. Five. Two. One. Very good, Tommy. Great. I'm just going to 
going to add that to your tart here. Okay. Next, I would like to just test your hearing real fast. So, I have a tuning fork right here, and I'm just going to hit it, hold it up to your ear. I'm going to have you keep your eyes shut for me, and you can just tell me when it stops, okay? Go ahead and close your eyes for me. Thank you. And here we go. And again. And again. You're doing a great job. And we're just going to do this one more time. Very good. You may open your eyes. Next, I would like to listen real quick to your heart and your lungs. So, this is going to be a little cold, but go ahead and lift up your shirt for me, Tommy. Thank you. All right. And go ahead and take some deep breaths in for me. Doing a great job, keep going. Okay, I'm just gonna go around back and listen to your back real quick. Okay, go ahead and breathe in. Alright, Tom. Your lungs sounded great. I am finding this more and more interesting the further we get into your study. It seems that your abilities are surpassing your human traits and qualities. It is quite astounding. Though I will determine that further once we do your psychological exam another day. Okay. Lastly, I would just like to get a quick blood sample from you. Oh, no, no. It won't be that bad. Just going to be a small finger prick. I would just like to test your genetic makeup and see if there's any significant differences compared to other SCPs and other humans. Okay? So, since we are unaware of what causes your displacement as of now, I am going to give you a 
little bit of a numbing solution for your finger. Typically, we wouldn't do this for a finger prick, but since I am not aware if your heart rate or your blood pressure or pain causes you to displace, I'm going to be safe and just give you a little, okay? All right. I'm really quick going to sanitize your finger and then I'll put on the numbing solution. All right, Tommy, are you right or left-handed? I only ask so that I do the finger prick on your non-dominant hand. Okay, perfect. Let me see, please. Don't worry, you're not going to feel a thing once we get that solution on there. So. Alright, finger please. Okay. Yeah. Now that should start to take effect fairly quickly. I'll give it about, say, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let me see. Can you feel that? No? Good. I have a needle right here, and I'm just going to do this fairly quickly. See? Didn't feel a thing. And I'm just going to get a small sample here on this cotton round. Thank you. Alright. Now, I have the baby right here. Feeling okay? Good. Alright. Now that we have all of that taken care of, I'm going to remove my gloves here. And I'd like to just do a quick word association with you, if that's okay, Tom. I'm going to give you a word, and I just want you to tell me the first word that pops into your head. Okay? Psychologist. Very good. SCP. Asylum. Family. Home. Happy. Vacation. Right. And hobby. Thank you for that. Well, no. There is no right or wrong answer. This is just for me to get to know a bit more about you. Alright? So, 
I understand that you have an interest in the paranormal and mythological, yes? And this has led you to have permissions to interact relatively with other SCPs that are harmless, and that you took a vacation to visit SCP-082, right? And how is that? Okay, so that's something that you enjoy. Now, getting a little more serious with you, Tommy, I understand your most recent shift has placed you in a room of complete darkness. Yes, and in this darkness you heard muted breathing. You seem uncomfortable. I apologize, I'm just trying to learn a bit more about this. It says here you told staff that when you were in this dark room and you could hear breathing, you chose to curl up in a ball and wait it out in a corner until you shifted back to avoid confrontation with whatever it was that was breathing. Okay. So this is correct. Alright. And because of this, you are now allowed to carry a small, and it does say small flashlight on you always. May I see it? Thank you. This does seem to be a very small flashlight. You know, Tommy, I don't see any issues on your record of you not cooperating or following instructions, or causing issues, so why don't I get you a bigger flashlight? I can see that this situation has stirred you a bit, you seem uncomfortable, and you've been nothing but cooperative, so I'll let you hold on to this for now, but I will make a note here in your chart to get you a stronger flashlight. Not a problem. Now, I see here that you've since teleported back to the same location, correct? How many times? Hmm. It's unfortunate. Does it seem like this may be your room in the alternate facility with a different SCP being held there? You're not sure because it's dark, I see. Okay. Well, I show on record that when you did use your flashlight, you were met face to face with the source of the breathing, correct? Tommy, are you okay? Tommy, what did you see? A smiling man. With an impossibly large smile. I could understand why that would be frightening. And he was wearing a black business suit. Fascinating. Okay. Hmm. And then what did you do when you saw him? You turned off the flashlight and curled up in a ball again. And did the man leave you alone? He did. Until you replaced back into our alternate reality. Hmm. Okay. It does sound terrifying. Now. It says that the other location that you've teleported to a few times here is a replica of our facility, correct? Okay. But it has fallen into disrepair. I see, so an alternate reality where our facilities have crumbled. Interesting. It says here that you encountered corpses, but they were breathing, and they were just strewn about. It is unfortunate that you haven't seemed to displace into a more charming reality. They were covered in some kind of fungal growth. 
Yes, it does say that here on your chart, as well as the outside world, correct? All covered in the same fungal growth. Hmm. It says here we took a sample of this material, but I don't see any results here on your file. I'll look into it, Tommy. Make sure I know what it is. Now, because of this displacement, you were granted a gun with rubber bullets. Yes? And do you still have it on you? Okay. May I see it? Thank you. Looks like your standard gun, but carries rubber ammunition. Has it helped you? Okay, good. You may have it back. Thank you for being up front and showing me the weapon. All right. Now, I see your hair on your file that you can be gone up to a week at a time after you're displaced. So you can spend a week or two in one location before you come back to our reality. I'm so sorry, how frightening. And it says here that once you reappear, you typically won't displace again for up to two weeks. Is that correct? Okay. So, we might be able to control it after all if it does move in standard increments. So, if it is, does seem to be every two weeks, we might be able to pinpoint it, and this can help you control it better. I'll do some research on that, Tommy. Oh, it also says here that staff should not come in contact with you if you have not displaced in two weeks. Hmm. wonder why that is. Well, how long has it been since you last displaced? Oh, I see. It's been two weeks since your last displacement. Why didn't they have that on record? Okay, I'm, I'm sure it will be a problem. I know I've been in contact with you and I did your exam, but we're basically done, so I'll be out of here in a minute. Sure, everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. Tommy. Tommy. Where are we? Did you just displace? Why? Where are we? Tommy. That sounds so.